So how does one solve a matrix? Hi, I'm Jimmy Chang. I've been teaching college mathematics for nine years. And solving a matrix is a little bit on the lengthy side. It's a rather long process, depending on what the numbers are, though. By now, you've, I'm sure you know what a matrix consists of, but how does one go about solving it? Well, what we're going to do is talk about a couple of forms that you want to use to solve a matrix. In other words, a couple of forms in which you want the matrix to be in. And then we'll discuss briefly the methods that will take to get there, but show you the benefits, more importantly, of those two particular forms. Now, one of the more common forms of solving a matrix, uh, the form that you want the matrix to be in, in order for you to figure out the answers, is that of row echelon form. Here's an example as to what row echelon form looks like. And, what you, and here's a structure as to how that works. You may notice here that there's a series of ones that are in a diagonal fashion. That's an example of row echelon form. Now, also, beneath each one, these are called leading ones, by the way, but underneath each leading one is zeros. The more zeros you have, the better, but if you have an entire row of zeros, not a bad thing, but not necessarily a good thing either, because a row full of entirely zeros isn't going to help you in terms of what your final answers are going to be. Now, to get to row echelon form, you need what's called Gaussian elimination. Now, it's a series of row operations that will get you to this particular form. But here's how this works. To get, you can Once you have a matrix in row echelon form, you can convert this to x plus 3y plus 5z equals to 9. In other words, you'll be able to convert the matrix into, three, into various equations. The second equation is going to be y plus 2z is equal to negative 1. And the bottom equation can be written as z is equal to 6. Now, the reason row echelon form is beneficial is because you know what the bottom answer is. You can take the 6, plug it back into the second equation, find out what y is. And then once you know your y, you can take both the y and z values and plug it back in to figure out your x value. Now, the other form is what's known as the reduced row echelon form. It's a simpler form, but it takes more time to get there. The method to get to that is gauss jordan elimination, which means you have to use more row operations to get to what you want. Now, take a look, though. Look how clean everything is. You have leading ones along the diagonal, but zeros above and below it. But here's the beauty of it. You know what the answers are for each particular variable. In this case, x is 5, y is negative 2, and z equals to 0. But once you master those methods, you'll be able to solve a matrix very easily. So I'm Jimmy Chang, and that is how you solve a matrix.